So we're going to redo the skit with someone as the resident. And what's that person going to do differently? Answer the door themselves. What else is the person going to do correctly? Take a friend. Take a friend out. Good. So if they do decide to go answer the door to the cop, they're going to bring a friend out. And what's the other thing they're going to do? Don't consent to searches. Go out on the porch. Go out on the porch and close the door behind you. Good. All right. Who wants to try it? All right. All right. Action. All right. Knock, 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 knock. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, let me get it. Come with me. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I got a call that um, there's a noise complaint for this party here that's happening. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, need you to turn the music down. Um, that's fine. Excuse me. Um, can I help you? Yeah, I was um, wondering. This looks like a pretty rowdy party. Can I just um, go inside and make sure? I do not make consent sure? to any searches. Um, I'm just trying to see if like there's any underage drinking here. Like I I'm do sure not using consent like to any searches. Am I being detained or am I free to go? You're free to go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon and Caroline were arrested together earlier today in some kind of heist. We're not totally clear on <laughs> And they've been put in separate cells. They haven't seen or talked to each other all day. There's an invisible wall here, but they can't see or hear each other through it. Marlon Cows, I suppose yeah, you know you you're in a great deal of trouble. Yeah, whatever. Facing some hard time here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got your little friend Caroline Crowland in the other room crying her eyes out, claiming uh, you're the ringleader of this whole operation. That's bullshit. She wouldn't tell you anything. Oh, really? Because she's been telling us things for hours. She wouldn't ride on me. Me and her, we're like this. Look, right? she gave we us went to grade school together. Oh, really? Well, okay. you're, she would never your tell you. Your close friend <laughs> just told us. Based on information that we got from her, we went to your apartment and we talked to your neighbors who said they saw you loading and unloading supplies used in this operation last night. Okay, see, this is how I know you're full of crap. I wasn't even at my house last night. Oh, right? really? I wasn't even there, so whatever you're trying to make up here is not going to work. All oh, right? really? Just forget it. Okay, well, uh, sit tight because you're going to be in here for a while. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Caroline Crowland. I suppose you know you're in a great deal of trouble, yeah. facing some hard time. Whatever. Your little friend Marlon Katz in the other cell is crying his eyes out, telling us you're the ringleader of the operation. He wouldn't do that, come on. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, he's been talking to us for hours. He says that you planned this whole thing, the whole thing was done out of Whatever. your house. Wait. He wasn't even at his house last night. Everything, he was at your Wait, house. how'd you know that? I'm telling you, he's been giving us information for hours. It's going to send you to jail for years. No, that's, that's not how it went down. Really? Yeah, no, like, it wasn't my idea, okay? Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, I sort of thought he was laying a little too much of this blame on you, so I wrote up this statement. See if this uh, kind of sets the record straight. That sort of shows that he was yeah. more in charge. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, it wasn't my idea. I don't know why he would tell yeah, you why that. Don't you, why don't you sign that, then? <laughs> Alright, well, we'll get you out of here real quick. Can you recognize that signature? What is this? Wait, wait, she signed this? Yeah. No, this is all wrong. I told you, you're the one she, facing the hard consequences because she's the one cooperating. She came to me. She was she was like, hey, I know you got all those bills. Like, I got this cool thing we could do. We'll make some extra money. Like, it was her idea. I was just basically along for the ride. You know, I sort of got the impression she was laying too much of this on you, so I uh, yeah. drew up this other statement. Let's see if that kind of sets the record straight. I mean, I don't want to snitch. Oh, well, she didn't seem to have that problem. Okay, okay, but if I sign this, I can get immunity, right? Right, we'll send you home tonight. All right. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so what, uh, what we call that, or what that is called, is snitch counter snitch. It's where the cops try to convince you that your friend rolled over on you, and they try to convince your friend that you rolled over on them. Um, and ultimately end up screwing you both. Um, and it looks hokey in our little uh, skit that we did here, but this actually works on people. Um, why? Because you're in jail. You're scared. You don't know what kind of time you're facing. Um, the cops have had you in there for who knows how long, and they've been working on your head this whole time. And remember, they're allowed to lie. They're allowed to lie to try and get information out of you. So they may have been telling you all kinds of crazy stuff. 
um, for hours and hours, right? They're allowed to make up fake evidence. They're allowed to make up fake charges that you could be facing. Wave around fake signed confessions, right? Fake witnesses, fake DNA. And all of this is an evidence of get in aid of getting you to give them some evidence against yourself that they can use to make whatever they've charged you with stick. Once you're in jail, obviously you're not going to talk your way back out the door. So keep your mouth shut. So you're better off not saying anything to cops or anyone else because anything that you say while in police custody might be being recorded, right? From inside the cop car to inside the jail cell. So the person sitting next to you in the jail cell could be a plant or they could be a real person, regular person that's trying to trade information about you to get themselves a lighter sentence, right? So don't say anything about illegal activities that could get you or someone else in trouble. All you need to say when you're in police custody is, I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. That way they can't use any information that you give them against you. This is you asserting your Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate yourself, right? So it, these words, as legalistic and hokey as they may sound, carry special legal weight. They require the cops to stop questioning you um, in order to get evidence from you. So if you just say the first part, I'm going to remain silent, that causes the cops to stop questioning you right then. But if you say the whole bit, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer, that requires them to stop questioning you until you've been before a judge. If you say this and then you say anything else after that, that's technically you waiving your Fifth Amendment right and it would allow them to come back and start questioning you again. Uh, but that's okay, because you could just say, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer, again, and that's you reasserting your Fifth Amendment rights. Anytime you realize that you screwed up and waived a right by accident, you can reassert it, right? Like, if they're in the middle of a search, you can always say, I don't consent to a search. Not as good, obviously, as saying it right up front, better than nothing. So a quick little note about signatures. Um, now, it's probably obvious to everyone from that skit, Marlon and Caroline are both going to jail for a long time, right? They, signed, they both signed confessions. If you sign something before you've seen a lawyer, you can never get that signature back, right? You can always sign something later with a lawyer present if you both decide that that's a good idea. Um, so the trick is never sign something that you're not absolutely certain what it is and certain that it's not a confession or a statement of facts. Um, if you're not sure, wait to see a lawyer. Just don't sign it, you know, stay in jail a couple extra days if you have to, because if you sign something and it turns out to be something that condemns you, you could be spending a lot of time in jail. Uh, are these same things applicable uh, for minors, or is it, is it different for a minor? You know, uh, same constitutional You still rights. have these rights um, as to how the justice system is going to treat you. It may be different, but your rights and how you should use them is exactly the same. Um, so that was the last skit. We're not going to make you guys do any more <laughs> crappy acting. Um, uh, and y'all did all the skits and uh, did very well, and you asserted your rights, and everything went great, right? And nobody got arrested. Um, but let's be honest, the skits that we're doing here, they're different from real life, right? Like, things don't always work out like this in real life. Um, and the fact is that even people who know their rights, who know all of this material cold, um, and get stopped by the cops, by real cops, really on the street or in their car, um, even people who know this stuff might decide at one time or another, you know what, this time I'm not going to assert my rights, I'm just going to cooperate with the police. What are reasons that somebody might have for doing that? They didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, they didn't know to do anything wrong. This yeah. It's going to be more of a hassle. Yeah, wanting to avoid hassle. You've been educated. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard. I've heard being afraid of both um, making the cop suspicious, uh, or just making the cop angry, or uh, or making a fuss, right? Like making it a bigger deal than it has to be. Um, and often people talk about, well, I didn't do anything wrong, or I don't have anything to hide. And all of these are understandable reactions, um, especially when you're dealing with this intimidating authority figure in your face trying to get you to cooperate. Uh, we all have these reactions and it's totally understandable. But even considering all of those things, we still say that it's better, for, it's better and safer for you to assert your rights. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about why we say that. For one thing, the question of um, you didn't do anything wrong. The fact is, uh, you may actually have done something wrong and you didn't know it. Um, and in talking to the police, you may accidentally confess to something 
that is a crime that you didn't realize was a crime. So for example, if you're walking around and a cop stops you and says, hey, there was a robbery in this neighborhood last night, where were you at 9 p.m.? And you say, officer, I, was, I wasn't making any trouble, me and my friends were just playing football in the park. Well, it turns out that park closes at sundown. Um, and maybe you didn't know that or you didn't even think about it, but you just confessed to a crime. Being in the park after dark is a crime. Um, now, let's say that you are some kind of like expert hotshot lawyer, and you know all the laws, and you know there's no way that you were breaking any of them, that you were absolutely you know, obeying the law. Um, in talking to the police, you might accidentally tell a lie um, or a falsehood. Lying to the police is a crime. Um, it could be considered obstruction of justice, um, you know, impeding their investigation, or even if it's not that, um, it could cast additional suspicion on you, right? So if a cop stops you and they're like, there was a robbery at this corner store across town, um, you know, what do you know about that? And you're like, look, officer, I don't even really go to that part of town. I've never been in that corner store in my entire life. Well, it turns out six months ago, you and your friends were maybe a little drunk and you went in that corner store to get some cigarettes and you forgot all about it, right? But there's security camera footage of you being in the corner store. Not illegal, right? It's not illegal to have been in a corner store. That's not a crime. Um, but the fact that you told false information to the police um, now puts you in a situation where you might be accused of impeding their investigation. Or beyond that, you may now be their top suspect. Because why would you have lied about that? Right? Like, try explaining that to a jury. Why would you lie and say that you weren't at this store? Now beyond all those things, even if you're sure that all of your statements are completely true and none of them could possibly be a confession to a crime, true statements that you make to the police can be used to cast more suspicion on you. So for example, if you get stopped and you're being questioned about some vandalism that's been done, and you say, look officer, me and my friends are into like the graffiti hip hop scene, but we would never vandalize anybody's property. We only write on legal walls, you know, we're respectful of the law. What do you think that cop's going to go write in his little notebook? He's going to write, him and friends are into graffiti, and that's it, right? Because the police are not the judge. They're not there to decide if you're innocent or guilty. They are only there to gather evidence about your guilt. So you can tell them, you know, an entire extended story about how you couldn't possibly have done it, and they're going to ignore everything that you say except the one sentence which could cast some suspicion on you. We have a saying, you can't talk your way out of an arrest, but you can talk your way into an arrest. Uh, which is to say, it's very rare that you're in a situation with the cops where they have enough evidence to arrest you, but then you say something to them that makes them go, oh, well in that case, go ahead, you know, obviously you're innocent. But it's very common that the cops don't have enough evidence to arrest you, and then something that you say gives them what they need to then go ahead and do it. And so a similar kind of thing goes for, um, for thinking you have nothing to hide. Right? You may think that you don't have any illegal items on you, but you might be wrong. Um, for one thing, it's a really bad time to find out that your friend who borrowed your jacket left um, a pot seed in the pocket before they gave it back to you. You don't want to be finding that out as the cops are rifling through your jacket. And beyond that, even if you don't have any friends who do anything illegal and you know that your stuff is totally clean, uh, there's all kinds of weird laws about contraband. The one that we often use is, what's the legal limit on the length of a pocket knife blade in Atlanta City? 2.5 inches? 2.5, 3. We've sometimes heard like the length of the palm of your hand or something, but it <laughs> must be variable. Um, we don't actually know, um, and it sounds like you guys don't know for sure either. Um, and it varies between county, between cities. Um, and again, you don't want to be finding out the answer to that question while they're pulling the thing out of your pocket or out of your backpack, right? Um, so you may have illegal items. Now, you may know that you have absolutely nothing illegal, but again, legal items that you have could be used to cast suspicion on you. Maybe the cops stopped you and you're just coming back from your waitressing job where you got a bunch of tips, so you got a bunch of cash. Cops may decide that you are on your way to a drug deal or that you just got back from a drug deal, that's why you have all this cash.